Well, with suffering from COPD and emphysema um, and the breathlessness, uh, always open to anything that you can find and found on the internet, this coils procedure. Um, investigated it, couldn't find any knowledge of it in South Africa, was arranging to go to Germany until got a uh, communication back to say that there was a Dr. Theron in Cape Town who was doing it, contacted Dr. Theron, came to see him, and now here we are having had two lungs done. The elasticity of the lung in, in emphysema patients are, are, are not there anymore. This increases the elasticity of the lung, and basically what it does, it, it folds the lung and makes the volume smaller. The first thing is you have to have quite severe emphysema, and then there's a lot of technical values that you have to fall into. So you don't have to, you shouldn't be too bad in, in, in terms of oxygenation, but you, you, you shouldn't be too good at either. Okay, so it's, it's a very narrow group of patients. The reality is, is that the other two options for somebody in my situation, which is who's saying, you know, do I just curl up and go away, or do you try and improve this, was before, was lung reduction surgery, which doctor will tell you he, would, he will not do, okay? He just will not perform it, or transplant, which either one is, pulling your chest open, I don't think that would have been ever on my cards, never was, okay? And then suddenly this, which is a whole different ball game. I mean, this was just a no-brainer. Um, you've got to do it. So basically, the first thing is to put the patient under anesthetic, um, and then we have a bronchoscope, which is a, a tube with a digital video camera on the end, two xenon spotlights, and a working channel. And then you decide what size quill, there's three different sizes, and then basically the coil is loaded out of this little box. So the coil is coiled up inside there. You've got nitin all this memory metal. So you've got the coil straightened in here. You load it into a tube like this. And we look with the camera while we also look with x-rays. And then you deploy it. As it comes out, it's going to be straight and it starts to coil back into its position like these and the little forceps will grab hold of that part of the little coil and you let it go. We've done six procedures, three patients, all three, all three of them um, went home the next day. The first one was amazing um, in that I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was, I came in, I was picked up the next morning, there was some, I was staying with some friends and other friends came around to visit in the morning. Okay, expecting to find me in bed and uh, needing a dark room and a sort of a pat on the head while well, sitting up at a bra and drinking spitzes. So, and, it, and I was feeling amazing. There are a couple of risk factors for, for, for developing of COPD in South Africa. Smoking, tuberculosis, environmental pollution, occupational exposure. Those are the broad things, but in the patient population that I see, smoking is majority. As I always say to all my patients, you need to stop smoking. That's the important thing. The second important thing is you need to exercise regularly. Even if you think you're short of breath, you can still exercise. It's still good for you. And then there's drugs. There's, there's a, a, a huge array of drugs that's available currently in South Africa. So that you, you can really tailor make the patient's therapy to, to what their needs are. If you can contact Mediclinic Panorama, they can contact my receptionist. If you're living in different parts of the country, you can go to your local pulmonologist um, or your local phys general physician and, and ask them about it. Um, if they don't know, maybe they can contact us. The whole experience, and particularly with Dr. Theron, has just been amazing. And, and that is perhaps maybe why I've had no apprehension. I've just felt in the, in the best hands I could possibly ever be in, and so it has proved, so it's been, been fantastic.